Okay, hi everyone. Uh, today what we're doing, we're going to do something called the mean value theorem. And it's kind of what we did before already uh, about averages. Uh, but let's look at this and, and we'll figure out kind of what's going on here. So the mean value theorem, mean value theorem. In algebra, we weren't, in, in algebra 1, we learned that the word mean is another way of saying average. And we've already talked about what averages are, right? You add up all the values and divide by the domain, by the range of the domain. So let's look at a simple problem like that right now. Uh, let's give ourselves a problem that looks like this, okay? The problem is f of x equals to x minus 1, and the domain is from 1 to 6, okay? The domain is 1 to 6. So what is the average first? or the mean, and then we're going to apply that. We're going to try to figure out some ideas about this, okay? So the first thing is, let's just draw this. You don't have to, but I just want to draw it just because this is negative 1, and the slope is rise over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. But in this case, I'm just going to plug in the values of 1, and then plug in the values of 6. Okay, if I plug in the 1, that's going to be 1 minus 1 is 0, and plug in the 6, 6 minus 1 is 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 1, 2, Two, three, four, five. Sorry, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and five. And this is some type of line like that. Now we can only get away with this because this is a simple line and not really hard to graph. Now the question is, if I could add up all the values here, what is the average value of this between the values of one and six? What's, what's the average value? Well. It for sure isn't 5, and it isn't 0, but someplace in between, right? So since this is a triangle, we can say, hey, isn't this the base 5 and the height 5? And the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height, which is 1 half 5 times 5, which is, uh, what is it? 1 half base times height, 5 times 5 12. is 25. 25 over 2, so 12.5, right? Okay, that's the average value. But is it true that the average value is 12.5 over here? Look, is the average value 12.5? Sorry. Nope, this is just the area. 12.5 is the area, that's not the average value. So we take the total area and we divide that by the domain, which is 6 minus 5. Now, this would have been easier if I just left it as a fraction, 25 over 2 divided by 6 minus, sorry, 6 minus 5. I don't know why I wrote 6 minus 5. Mr. Co. 6 minus the domain. 6 minus 1, right? Sorry about that. 6 minus 1, which is 5. Maxim joins us. Oh my gosh, they're so loud. This ding dongs. And that uh, allows us to multiply by the reciprocal, 25, darn it, 25 over 2 times 1 over 5, which is 5 over 2. So this is our average, or the fancy word mean. Okay, easy peasy, right? Now, now that we have learned integration, we can do this with integrals. The integral between 1 and 6 of x minus 1 dx, all right? So would this give us the same answer using the integral? Now, x squared minus x is my integral of x minus 1. We're going to plug in values of 6 and 1. So it's 36 minus 6 minus uh, 1 minus 1. Then that gives us 36 minus 6, is that right? Oh, over 2, I forgot it. Darn it, over 2. Over 2. Okay, over 2. All right, I forgot about that power rule. So we're like 18 minus 6 minus uh, a negative negative is a positive, right? So we're going to add plus 1 half. That's uh, 8 plus 1 half is eight and a half. Mm. 
Uh, 18 minus 6 is 12. Oh, thank you. I was wondering what was going on. My brain's not working right now. And that gives us our 12.5. And is 12.5 my average? Right? Is my 12 one halves my average? No, nope, we said we had the same problem. We didn't divide by the domain. So now this is what we have to include in my original formula. We say 1 over 6 minus 1. Okay. So the average, if we divide this by, you know, this whole thing, right? By 1 over 5 now divided by 12.5 over 5, or again, better, 12 one halves, which is 25 over 2 divided by 5, like we, we did before. That will give us our 5 over 2. Okay, so what is our official formula for this? To find the average value of something, the mean, it's 1 over b minus a, integral from a to b, of f of x dx and this is our average or the word mean okay so as you can see both methods came out nicely but one reason why is because this was a dumb triangle easy peasy easy triangle if I change this to a parabola oh my goodness a parabola that would be terrible right so I give you guys a parabola uh, that's going to cost us more work, more time, and seems like a lot more work. Okay. Now, if I show you guys an example here, if I say it's a parabola, some parabola value here, and I go from 0 to 6. Now, we can't draw triangles, so we can't do it geometrically, but we can do this, of course, using calculus. And this would be the, if I call this f of x, how would I find the average of f of x between 0 and 6 in this case? It would be 1 over 6 minus 0, the integral from 0 to 6 of f of x dx. And that's the setup. But today, what we're learning is called the mean value theorem. Now, why is the average all of a sudden a theorem? Okay, The mean value theorem, mean value theorem, is a kind of a fancy rule. It says this, that if you have a average, right? The average, right? average of f of x is equal to some f of c, meaning there's a value inside f of x at c where the average actually exists. Okay. So let me rephrase that in another way with the example that we just saw. If we can find the average, the mean value theorem says, hey, that average exists someplace in your graph, guaranteed, 100%. This, of course, is, is that the graph is continuous. Let's go back and take a look at my original problem here. We said my average was 5 over 2. Now, is the f value, the y value, 5 over 2? Is 2.5 someplace in this graph? 2.5? Yes. Yeah, it does. Right? And if I draw you any type of graph, and let's make a graph, a graph here. If I say this average value um, exists, equals to some f at c, well, fine. The average value of this graph might be, let's say, this is my average value. So there is a f of c value here and here. And sometimes it could happen in more than one place. But the rule says at least at one place, there will be the average existing there. Now, is this true for all situations? Answer is no. Because if the graph isn't continuous, 
this isn't going to be it. Imagine looking at someone's GPA. Isn't a GPA the average of your grades? And they say, for instance, GPA is like 2.7. But is there really a 2.7 someplace in your grades? No, it's either a 3 or a 4. Right? Because these are discrete numbers and it's not continuous. You jump from 3 to 4, you don't go 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, 3 you just go from 3 to 4. So this only works when it's continuous. But the idea is that this rule will always be true. This always exists. If I can find the average, I can find the y value, the x value, and the y value. So the x value where this happens. And that's what we're going to do right now. The mean value theorem says, hey, we have a y value equals to 2.5. Let's go in and find out where that happened. So 2.5 is equal to x minus 1. Okay, 2.5 is equal to x minus 1. Now, where is that x value that it happens at? I'm going to minus, uh, sorry, plus 1 to both sides. So x equals to 3.5. At f, at 3.5, this is also my average value. And that's what the mean value theorem says. Okay, let me pause here. Okay, so if this is the case, let's let's do a, another example in the real world example. If I took all the populations uh, in, of America and we found the average height, could I find a couple of people with that height? With because the population is large enough, yeah, it looks almost continuous, but they are discrete. But we could find people with that same height. Now let's do another problem here. Um, the problem is f of x equals to e to the x, and we'll do between um, 0 and 3, okay? Now, looking at the e to x graph, looks like that, right? Exponential, shooting off to infinity. Now, I can't use a triangle or a rectangles to find the exact value here, so this, in this case, we would actually have to find the integral. Integral from 0 to 3, e to the x. This gives me a sum of all my values. But remember, average, to find the average value of something, you add up all the values and then you divide by your range or in the, your domain, I guess. So we, I'm going to write, not this way, 3 minus 0. Okay, so we're going to be able to do this by hand. So it's 1 over 3. And then the, the derivative, sorry, the integral of e to the x is e to the x. So we're going to multiply this by e to the x from 0 to 3, 1 third, e to the 3 minus e to the 0, okay, which is just going to be some decimal number, 1 third e cubed minus 1, which is now some decimal. Now the problem is, how do I then find the actual value of this guy here. So let me go ahead and plug this into my calculator. What is e cubed? Plus one. Oh, sorry, minus one. And then divide by three. The average value is 6.36 okay that's my average value 6.36 so between e is 0 that's 1 and e to the third that was e to the third is 20.09 the average value here would be something like 6.36 now where what x value would give me 6.36 now, you would have to then solve it. f of x, right, we said was e to the x. 6.36 is equal to e to the x. Do you guys know how to solve this problem? Back to algebra 2. The natural log? Good job. Natural log. So we natural log both sides. ln of 6.36 equals to natural log of e to the x. The natural log brings down the exponent. Natural, natural logs bring down the gods. So natural log 6.36 equals to x, natural log of e. What natural log of e cancels out? That's done. So it's just a calculator answer. x equals to natural log 
6.36 and ln that and I'm getting 1.85 1.85 right, and that's where the x value now let me go ahead and jump to Desmos real quick I'm graphing e to the x e to the x is my graph and if I plug in the point we said it was something like 1.85 are we gonna get 6.36 see 1.85 uh, 6.3, right? Okay. All right. So that so that value is right. Okay. Oopsie daisy. Yeah. Yay. Right. Now, here's another way of doing it. Just write 6.36. Is, is that what the number was? 6.36. Here's another way. 6.36 y is equal to 6.36 and now take a look here if I just click on this number we end up with 1.85 which is what we wrote before now why am I saying this let me clarify what I just did here I first graphed our original graph we said this is my original graph we know the average is 6.36 what is the x value the x value is going to be 1.85 that's the x value that the average um, that the average value would exist on the graph okay why am I showing you how to do it graphingly is because sometimes it's effing hard to find this solution for us here to do this work here you your algebra 2 skill had to be pretty darn good but what if I made this problem look really ugly? What if I wrote, for example, this was e to the x plus 3 minus e to the x minus 4 equals to 7. I don't know. I mean, you could try rewriting this. Or what if I wrote, messed it up some more? And I, instead of writing e, I just wrote something like ln of x plus 4. Okay? And I asked you to try solving for this. This would be kind of hard and impossible to do. So what you would do is you would use your graphing calculator. And in, you, in the case of the graphing calculator, I could use Desmos or I could use my graphing calculator uh, that I had you guys download or your graphing calculator you guys have in front of you. Now, I want to show you guys how to do this. We're going to do another problem here. And we are going to find out where does this happen at. So let's see. Oops. Okay, here's our problem. The problem is going to be uh, f of x equals to 4x to the 1 half power between 0 and 1. We're going to find c, okay? Where c is where the average and the function are the same. Okay? So do the problem, we say the integral of 4x squared, so 1 half, dx between 0 and 1 and 1 over 1 minus 0. Okay, that will give us the average value. Once we find the average value, we're going to have to find where that exists on the graph. Okay, so we can do this by hand, right, if you want to. Let's go ahead and do this by hand. This will be 4x to the 2 over 2, right? Add 2 over 2. So that's 3 over 2 over 3 over 2. That's the integral. Uh, simple make that a little nicer it's going to be uh, 4 times 3 uh, 2 over 3 right reciprocal x to the 3 over 2 rewriting that nicely uh, it's 1 integral not, not integral anymore times 8 over 3 x to the 3 over 2 bar plug in the 0 and the 1 if I plug in the 1 it's a nice number that'll be 8 over 3 so it's 8 over 3 
minus 0, which is just 8 over 3. So we're saying the average value would be 8 over 3. Now, where does 8 over 3 exist on this graph? 4 to the x to the 1 half power. When would this equal to 8 over 3? And in this problem, we could probably figure it out. Multiply 4 to both sides. 8, sorry. So divide 4 to both sides. So that will be divide by 4, divide by 4. x to the 1 half equals to... Uh, this is 8 over 3 times, this is 4 over 1, so 1 over 4. So that reduces to 2 over 3. And we square it, x equals to 4 over 9, when I'm squaring both sides. Okay, now is 4 over 9 in the domain, is 4 over 9 between in the domain between 0 and 1? Yeah, it is. So let's go ahead and do this in a graphing way. And in this case, it's still kind of easy to do. 4 times x to the 1 half. Mr. Ko, when you wrote find c, was that supposed to be find x? or? Uh, we're gonna, remember, it's f, f of c oh, equals yeah. to the average. All right, my bad. OK, so this is our graph. And when does the graph equals to, we just say y is equal to 8 over 3. And we can take a look here. The work is done for us at 0.49. It's 0.44. And let me double check that. 4 divided by 9 is 0.444 forever. Now, let me ask you, which one was easier? Me doing the math or me just graphing it and finding where they intersect? Oh my gosh, people are coming. Got graphing it? Graphing it? I would agree graphing it, right? This problem was not terribly hard to do. But what if I gave you a log, a natural log problem? What if I gave you a polynomial function? Right? If this was x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals to 8 over 3, um, that's going to be kind of annoying, right? So the goal here is to say, hey, if this was a graphing calculator problem, a calculator allowed problem, the fastest way is for you guys to graph this. Now, Desmos uh, isn't allowed on the AP exam. We wish it was. It'd be super cool if it was, but it's not. Now, let me ask you, are these skills that difficult? Is us finding the integral of something and then dividing it by our domain hard? No, right? It's something that we practiced before. Is this necessarily hard? Not if it's a simple Algebra 2 problem, but if it's hell on earth, that's where the calculator is helpful. And that's where Desmos is helpful and our graphing calculator. Now, I want to show you guys how to do this on your graphing calculator today. And pretty much that is, like, this is it. This is the, like, the main takeaway. That's the lesson. Now, our problem now is figuring out how to do this. Because okay. you guys can take integrals, you guys can solve for algebraic problems. Now, how can I do this on my freaking calculator? So let me go ahead and show you guys how to do this. Let me go ahead and share again from my second screen. Okay, so we're going to hop out into Wabbit EMU. All right. So what we're going to do here is we are going to graph exactly what we just did in Desmos. We're going to do exactly in Desmos. Actually, no, we're going to do everything here on the calculator because it's super awesome. So we're going to first take the derivative on the calculator, okay? Take the derivative on the calculator. Here we go. How do you take the derivative? You guys all see this math button here? Hit please hit math. And then you can see down here, our derivatives and integrals are actually right here. And you guys can see it says n derive or fnint. n derive means derivative and fnint means integral. Now you could just keep hitting down, down, down. Let me give you a shortcut. Just hit the number 9. If you hit the number 9, bam, we will have our integral good to go. 
Okay. Now, if you look at this integral, it is legit set up the way integral should be. We're going to plug in from 0 to 1, 0, arrow up, 1. And the function I'm going to plug in is 4 times x exponent, I'm going to draw a parenthesis here, uh, 1 over 2. Oh, why does it kick me out all the time? I think it's my, causing my phone to kick me out. Let me go ahead and share my screen again. Okay, so we're going to do one. Oh, darn, I know why. Shoot. It's my fault. I keep clicking on that and I don't even know I'm clicking on it. Oh, no. You guys need to read my emails. I guess this won't be uploaded for too long. Okay, we're going to hit one. Oh, no. Not going to fall for it again. Come on, one. One, yeah. Over two. Close it, click out, arrow out, and we're going to do dx. Okay, so if you guys can type that in your calculator, you guys can realize that this will do the, the integral for you. In the front, remember how we're supposed to divide by 1 over b minus a? Can you guys all see this little insert here? Oops, you see this little insert? This little blue button insert? You could have typed the insert. 1, oh, come on, not going to fall for that again. 1 divided by... Um, B minus A, so it's going to be parentheses 1, ah, come on, 1 minus 0. Uh-oh. Dang it, it won't let me do it here. Because it's not allowing me to share my screen and hit the 0 button either. Oh, there it goes. Turn it. Oh my goodness. Let me do this again. 1 divided by parentheses 1 minus 0. Come on. Hmm, how come I'm not deleting it? Minus 0. Close parentheses. And then we're going to do math. 9 B minus A Oh shoot, I'm afraid it's going to kill me there. Zero, one, four, x, exponent, parentheses, one over two, close parentheses, and then x. Okay, let's see what number it gives me. Uh oh 2.666 which is our answer right that's what we wanted 2.666 i can copy that number um there's a copy feature store you guys see the sto button on the left hand side Just sto go away I'm going to store it. You can store it to 1. I think I can store it to 1. Or is it stored to A? I think store it to A. Letter A. Oops. Let's see if it worked. Graphing y equals to receive from. Nope. Receive from A. Nope. Didn't, didn't keep it for me. I forgot how to do this. Anyways. So I can quit. Let's look at that number again. Does it copy? Store. Oh, enter store to A. That's how you do it. Darn it. Enter store. Oh, you have to hit the letter. Shoot. Enter store to second to alpha alpha a that's what you do okay i think i remember now how to do it so if you guys want to store a number do you guys know copy and paste on your computer you can copy and paste here but you store it into memory the way you do it you go up to uh, you pick the number you want to store hit enter 
Then you hit store. It gives you an error. Then you have to pick a letter you want to store it at. I'm going to hit alpha A to store it to letter A. And now it will be stored to letter A now. I'm going to go graph this. I'm going to receive it. RCL is the receiving it. Receive um, alpha A. Let's see if that worked out. Yep, copy it. And the second part is my equation. For hey, Mr. Co, right now I just put in A and it worked. Oh, it did? Oh, even better. I yeah. So. Oh, cool. Yeah, you, you should test that because I could be wrong, but yeah. I, I literally just put it, uh, Y is equal to A. Oh, even better. That's cool. That might that totally makes sense, though, that it would work, right? But I think what happens is when I wrote it, it actually wrote out the number, and yours just writes out the variable. Okay, so let me go ahead and hit graph now. And when you look at the graph, it looks kind of... That's my 2 point something, and that's my... Um, x to the one half now i want to zoom in real quick you can zoom or you can zoom box i rather just use a zoom box it takes a little bit more time but it allows me to pick where i want to zoom so you pick the first point oh what darn it did i hit zoom out no if you mess up on your zoom what you do hit zoom and then z standard if you hit zoom six it resets your zoom box Okay, and then I hit zoom. I'm gonna zoom. Oh, I hit zoom out. I went to zoom square. Zoom zoom box. Sorry, that's the first one. Zoom box. Zoom box. In the back of the box. Zoom box. So, do you have to do a zoom box? You do not have to zoom box at all. But I'm just showing you guys. If I zoom in, you guys can kind of see where they meet. Okay, there are still a couple flaws here. So how do I figure out where this line is? You could try to move your arrow and then try to get there. But I'm telling you, this is super inaccurate and this is just guessing, okay? That is terrible. You can hit the button trace. If you look at the upper right-hand corner, it says trace. Trace will allow you to get on this line and if it up and down, you will hop between the functions. Up and down switches between the functions. <clears throat> And if I just try to get there, same thing, it's going to give me something that's not necessarily accurate or inaccurate. So how do I find out the actual value? Again, this is pre-Desmos, right? This is 1998 work going on, okay? 1998, okay, pre-Desmos. Oh my gosh, sorry. Darn it, I need to, can't save this YouTube video anymore. Okay, so here is uh, what we do. You guys see the word calc on top here? It says F4 calc, hit second calc, and we are going to find the intersect. C5 says intersect, hit 5. It's going to ask you the first curve, which is red or blue, hit enter. Second curve, hit enter again, because that's the second curve. And then make a guess. I'm going to guess where they're going to intersect, and the guess is going to be at 0.444, which is our answer. Okay. So if you have a scientific calculator, so if you have a graphing calculator, this is how we would use our, oh my gosh, like compared to Desmos, this takes forever. But that's what 1998 gave us, okay? And this is what is allowed on your AP exam. The AP exam is said it's going to be the same full test now. It's not going to be the short test. And if, if we do go back to school and we're, or if you guys are asked to go back to school to take the AP exam, you guys will have to be using a graphing calculator. So you guys will have to use it under this mode. It does do take a little bit. Do we have to graph this? Um, so there are solvers, but I think this is one of the easiest ways to, to find where they intersect. But just by graphing them, like without overthinking it, this is how we just, just graph two things and where they intersect, that's the x and y value. Okay, So let's go ahead and do another problem here. I'm going to give you guys another harder problem and a rather impossible problem. And you guys will be able to use your calculator on this. Not impossible, but more work problem. And let's write it here. Let me go ahead and share the screen. And this will... So it takes so long to talk about the calculators. 
here's our next problem that we're going to try. And this one, you're not going to even need to do it by hand, okay? I'm not going to have you guys do it by hand, but here's our problem. Uh, f of x is equal to 3 e to the 2x plus 2 between negative 3 and negative 1. Okay, calculator. And then you're going to find C. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to my graphing calculator. If you guys have a graphing calculator. If you want, you guys can download an Apple something or other that does graphing calculator stuff. And you have to learn how to use that. So let me go ahead and share my screen here. Uh, come on, share screen. I thought I found one, but then it... it Turns out you have to pay for it. It's like a, it's like a seven right, eight, right, right. Wow. They charge you for it, right? That's why my um, Android device here, totally free, but totally not necessarily legal. Um, this is legal if you guys have this already, right? This is just an additional resource, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Y is equal to, not Y is equal to. This. I'm gonna second quit to get back out into the mainstream. I'm gonna write parentheses one, come on, divided by. B over A. The B over A is negative 3 um, minus, oh sorry, negative 1. Darn it. I have, to, I, have to, I have to do another parenthesis here. Negative, oh come on, why is this so hard to click? Negative 1 minus negative 3. Close it. That's my B over A. Close that. And then I'm going to math 9. Remember, math 9 is our integral from negative 3 up to negative 1. My f of x is some ugly e value. It's going to be 3 e, which is over here on my left in blue. And parentheses, I'm writing another. Oh, actually, maybe you don't have to since it's pretty font. 2x plus 2, and x. All right, easy peasy. <laughs> yeah, right? But kind of works. Hit enter. It's giving me the answer 0. 0.736. OK, 0. 0.736. Now that I know what the average is, we have to find out where on the graph does 0. 0.736 actually exist. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to copy this number. So I'm going to go store it in alpha A. Oh, sorry, enter first, and then store in alpha A. Just so I don't have to rewrite it anymore, hit enter. Now it's stored in my A value. There's no copy and paste. This is pre-copy and paste. And then we're going to go ahead and graph this graph. Um, okay. There's actually another trick. I want to show you guys another trick instead. Okay, But let's do this first. Three. E, uh, second E, exponent is 2x um, plus 2. That does that wasn't too painful, right? So that's the equation of my graph. I'm going to paste. Um, Andrew said we can just write alpha A, and that should take that value. Okay. If not, you could re recall it. And let's see if the graph comes out. Um, Here's a thing. It, I don't see anything, right? So I'm going to reset my zoom. So Z standard 6. Okay. Come on, weapon. Oh, is, it's still thinking on the upper right-hand corner. Oh, my gosh. This is actually making my phone hot. That good bootleg software. Blow up. Bootleg software, right? Throw it to the side before it blows up, Mr. Ko. Okay. Uh, as you can see, nothing's happening. So my calculator is stuck. So the way you force yourself out of a calculator is you hit second and off. <laughs> and it'll force it to stop. And now I broke my calculator. Uh oh, I turned it off now. Oops. Hey, hi there. Don't show me this message again. Okay, let's go back and hit the graph. Uh, okay, there's my graph. It's showing up now. All right. Okay. And. Oh, wait. That doesn't make any sense. Oh yeah, sure, 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 sure. Okay, all right. Now, where does that intersect? You could zoom in, and I could zoom in, and that could be a lot of work for me. Instead, 
just find the intersect. Go second calc, second calc, and that's uh, intersect five. Now, same two questions all the time. First curve, just hit enter. Second curve, just hit enter. And then make a guess. Now, the thing is, there's only one point here. So just randomly guess anywhere you want. And you can see it's negative 1.70. And 1.70 is between negative 1 and negative 3. And that's the C value that would uh, prove the mean value theorem. So your C value is the X? That's right. See, the X and the Y value is 0.736. Okay. So if you're trying to figure out where two lines meet, um, sorry, if you're trying to figure out where two lines meet, I would just easily graph it really fast. Now, here's something really cool. If you had wrote the graph first at, see y1 is equal to 3 e2x plus 2, okay? Here's something really cool. Go second quit. I want you guys to see that you can actually use that y1 value in your integral. So everyone try this. Go hit math 9. Actually, you know what? Uh, I'm going to show you make this a little easier. We're going to say, what is, what is um, 1, what was this part right here? We did 1 divided by negative 1 minus negative 3, that's 1 divided by 2, right? Oh, 1 divided by, no, negative, negative is positive. Yeah, 1 divided by 2. Okay, that was our fraction in the front, darn it. 1 divided by 2, that's our fraction in the front, and we're going to write the same integral up here. So we're going to go math 9, everyone hit math 9. And Can what we're going to do... calculator only has a regular integral. It doesn't have the... It doesn't look pretty like the, that, right? So what happens is you can update your software. If we were at school, I would update your software for you, but we're not at school. And uh, so I will show you how to you type. You can update this? Oh, yours? Okay. Yours is a Casio. Casio is different slightly, but there is a pretty font feature, I thought, for that Casio. Mm, I'll, I'll find the instruction booklet on how to do integrals for you. Do, are you able to do okay, integrals on it or you can't? You can, right? I can only do the regular integral. I can't do the defined one. Oh, okay. Uh, that that one you might just have to put comma a comma b. So after you write the function, write comma a comma b comma negative three comma negative negative one comma negative. Uh, okay. Yeah. Just write the commas, <laughs> comma a comma b. So I think comma negative three comma negative one. Close it, and then it should work. Try that. Okay, I'm gonna write negative negative three, negative one. Now, folks, here is the crazy part. I'm not going to write 3e to the 2x plus 1. I'm going to go ahead and use what I wrote down in y equals 2. Now, take a look here. There's a y vars. There's a vars variable here. Do you guys see the vars button right there? Okay. Hit vars. Go y vars. y vars because there's a y variable. Function. And if you take a look, y1 is already buried in here. If I write y1, I don't have to rewrite that equation. You lost me. Okay, let me do this again. But if you can look here, I have pretty much the same equation as we did on top, except I didn't type out 3e to the 2x plus 1 because I already typed it out here. And the calculator will allow you to copy that y1. Let me show you how I did that y1 again, okay? You hit y1 is the type of variable, isn't it? So we hit vars on the right here next to the word clear. There's a button called vars. Everyone see vars, okay? This is a y type of variable. Hit go to y vars. This is a function, not a polar coordinate or parametric equation. Y, so this is a function. And then you can pick which function you chose. I chose y1. If I do this, it will give us our same answer, 3.7.736 to save time. Uh, Jessica, did it work for you on that calculator? Um, I don't know how to put X in my calculator. Uh, you don't have to put X. Oh, wait, um, do you mean the regular X? Like three, like two to the X? I don't know if you can see that. Uh, let me, wait, let me just give me a sec. I can see it if you give me a second while I spotlight for everyone. Oh, no, it didn't. Let me stop sharing. Darn it. Uh, pin? No. What if you mute yourself and I just keep talking? 
Let me uh, stop sharing here. I think that's what I need to do. Sorry, this would be so much easier if we were not here. Well, that's uncomfortable. Okay, uh, I'm going to look at my phone so I'm not staring at you like that. Okay, so the first part is right, right? And then the second part is integral, blah, 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 blah. And then you close it, comma, comma, and then put a last comma at the very end. The parentheses, put parentheses at the very end. And see if a ledger hit enter. It gave me an error. Uh, error says syntax error, right? Um, I will... Yeah, and the error is on that parentheses. Uh, delete that parentheses then. And then try again. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's the right answer. Is that right? Yeah, that's exactly oh, the right answer. Finally. So what happens is um, then... you close it a little too early. So uh, oh oh. Yeah, oh so the integral has its oh. own parentheses, and then mm -hmm. uh, you close the function parentheses, comma a b, and then that final close. Okay. So what do I do with this? Okay, so now how you do have, I like copy it? Uh, so your calculator might have a copy feature. If you look around, it has a capture and paste. Oh yeah, so maybe capture. So hit up, maybe, and then it'll highlight it, and then hit capture. Will that work? No. Okay, so you have to work on trying to figure out how to capture that number. Maybe it's a capture button, and then you can paste it later. Okay. Cool. Honestly, the Casios actually are written to be actually easier than the TIs. FYI, I mean, it doesn't feel like that right now, but but it will. And if you get stuck, uh, I'll send you the instruction book and on how to do the, some of this stuff. Okay. Actually, can you email me and then I'll send you the instruction book because I'm going to forget. Okay, we are yeah. way over time now. So what's going to happen for this homework is you guys can use your calculators to take these integrals now. Okay. Uh, you can do all these integrals actually by hand using use substitution and such, but also practice using your calculator. Only ones that you guys need to um, find the C value are the last six questions. Okay, so practice doing that um, by calculator. You can try, I would say, forget it by hand. Supposedly you're supposed to be able to do it by hand already, right? So just do it on a calculator, see if you guys can do it on a calculator, okay? If you do not have a graphing calculator, just use Desmos. I know Desmos is faster, but it doesn't give you the practice you need for the AP exam, okay? So FYI, because AP exam, you have to use that graphing calculator. It's so homework, we just use calculator? Yeah, just use the calculator. Okay, thank sorry, you. If you guys started and you guys did it by hand, sorry about that. But for this, there's going to be a, a lot of use substitution problems. So all these problems you can actually do by hand, okay? Please understand, you can do these cap problems by hand, but go ahead and practice on your calculator for, for this assignment. And the last six questions are where you have to graph it and find out where they intersect and tell me what the C value is, which is an X value. Uh, Emily, I'm sorry, I missed a question when you said way back when, do you know the date? Oh, for the AP exam? Oops. Oh, uh, that I would have to look up on AP board. So one more thing is, remember, uh, you guys have to pay for the AP exam if you guys are planning to take it. If you guys receive my message, if you guys, uh, you guys probably receive messages from all your AP classes, but if you guys want to pay for it in person, I send it to you the date in, on the Saturday where the school will be open for you guys to pay by hand. And you don't have to pay that uh, whatever 4% fee or something. Okay. All right. On Colored War, it says that the uh, AP Calculus test is going to be on May 4th at 8 a.m. Cool. Thank you. May 4th. May 4th sounds like May Day, right? Is May 4th May Day? May the 4th be with you. Oh, May the 4th be. It's a, okay. Good point. May the 4th be with you. Huh. All right. Can we pay online? Yes, you can. And when you pay online, there is just a slight fee uh, because mm -hmm. of the credit card charge. Yes. Oh, okay. But some people that Do we get some... have to pay that full 90. Uh, unless you qualify for free reduced lunch. Uh, yes, that's the price. That, that's the monopoly price. Right. I think our test is actually on May 24th. Uh oh, shoot. Because I think the May 4th one is for if you're taking it in school. Uh oh, I think that needs to be clarified later. Yeah, because I was planning on those, but I was planning on taking it online. Right. When so, will we finish like learning so then we could start taking practice tests? Uh, we have about probably another two weeks of two, three weeks of still material. 
Um, but usually by by May, by March, we should have been done with the content. Um, but mm-hmm. but we'll still have like a full month and a month and a half to go review and do actual like college board style questions as that kicks it up a notch. Kicks it up with like three notches. But yeah, we still have time. But we're almost at the end. Like now that we're we can do uh, these integrals, we're gonna move on to finding volumes of solid shapes and stuff like that, which is straight integrals again. These are just integrals. Mr. Co. Yep. It also says there's a possibility it's on June 9th. Oh my goodness. Because there's like three um, categories your AP test could be in. Oh yeah, I see it. Paper in school, yeah. I see administration but one. Then, but then there's two paper and there's two in school and online categories. Okay, so. One's June 9th and one's May 24th. I think I'll ask and I'll seek clarification from the AP coordinator, okay? Because don't we end school on like Thank June you. 10th? Yeah, we, okay. we end on June 10th. So I'm not real quite sure. Maybe that's like the late, late version, the absent version. Uh, I don't know. So I'm going to ask the coordinator about that. Thank you. Okay, guys. Sorry about that. Uh, it went super long today. Have a good day. Uh, if you have any questions, email me or uh, I can answer your questions when I see you guys on Monday. I do see you guys on Monday, okay? Thank, Thank you, Mr. Kyle. Uh, have guys. a good weekend. Have a very nice week. Thank you. And... Sorry if this was confusing the calculators. It's kind of hard to do online. Oh, should I should stop recording. <laughs>